hello there and first things first happy new year if you will allow me to say that to you uh, regardless of what your beliefs are whether you, you're a Jehovah's Witness or not I hope you will allow me to wish you the most prosperous 2018 that you could possibly have. Now I wasn't planning on making a video today but as many of you know I can be found on Twitter and a friend of mine, well not just a friend, a colleague, Covert Fade, tweeted about something that was on Reddit. I'm explaining all this because I want to be sure to give credit to where all this has come from. So there's a post on Reddit that's titled, Sisters telling others what to do during the song, gotta fix those lyrics ASAP. Kids getting abused by fellow congregants, gotta wait on Jehovah. And this is a Reddit post by The Force 17 and it's quite astonishing. It's the sort of thing where if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you'll, you'll probably just zone out while you're reading this and you won't really think too much about what's being said. But The Force 17 has highlighted a paragraph that was in a November 2017 watchtower and I will now read the paragraph to you in full because it is quite remarkable, okay? So, it says, to help everyone to sing from the heart, some lyrics have been revised to improve clarity of thought and to remove words that are no longer in common use. For example, the word shall is not widely used today, so it has been replaced. Similarly, the title Long Suffering has been changed to Exercise Patience, and the lyrics have been adjusted accordingly. The change of the title Guard Your Heart to We Guard Our Hearts was most considerate. Why? In the audience, at our meetings, assemblies and conventions are many new ones, interested ones, young ones and sisters who by singing the words would be put in the awkward position of telling others what to do. So the title and the lyrics were modified. So let's just back up a little bit. This is the new songbook, the very latest songbook. I was able to persuade someone to give this to me when I visited the London Bethel back in April. And if you, if, I'm trying to see if I can find the actual song itself. Yeah, here we are. Song number 36 is We Guard Our Hearts. And it used to be called Guard Your Hearts. And here, so I don't want to give fl uh, flashbacks or, um, or trigger any PTSD, but this is how the song went. We guard our hearts, it means our life. We shun the path of sin. God reads the heart and there he finds the person deep within. What did you think of that? I liked it. Oh, you, uh, <laughs> you like that? No, I just wanted to see what you do if I said I did. <laughs> now, obviously, I'm not expecting any record deals uh, to be forthcoming from that brief sample of my singing, uh, but that's the gist of how the new version of the song goes. Uh, and as it's saying, rather than saying, we guard our hearts, the old version was guard your hearts. Now, where to begin with this? Um, essentially, as I see it, there are three main problems with what's said in this paragraph. The first and most obvious problem is that it is hopelessly sexist and misogynistic. I obviously mentioned in a very recent video that this is due at least in part to the Bible itself being sexist because I read two verses uh, with the help of Alex O'Connor. We looked at two verses, 1 Corinthians 14, 34 and 1 Timothy 2 verse 12, both of which were writings by Paul 
basically telling women to shut up. I desire the women to be silent in the congregation. That's where this whole mindset is coming from, this idea that women don't get to tell anyone what to do. Women shouldn't be expressing an opinion. Women, uh, for example, when they are going out in the ministry should be thinking about whether they need a head covering in certain situations because they can't be seen to be uh, teaching uh, a male who has headship over them in some way. So it's astonishing sexism. It, it, it's a perfect way of demonstrating just how backward, you know, Watchtower theology is when it comes to its approach toward women. Uh, that's the first problem. The second problem with this bizarre paragraph is that it is inconsistent. So here again is the Sing Out Joyfully to Jehovah book. And if you look in the back of the book, it's actually quite an interesting exercise to go through some of the song titles because what you find is that there are a lot of songs that are have exactly the same issue as uh, Guard Your Heart. So, for example, Be Forgiving, Be Steadfast Unmovable, Declare the Good News, Encourage One Another, Fear Them Not, Forward You Witnesses, Go forward in preaching the kingdom. Keep on seeking first the kingdom. Listen, obey, and be blessed. Make a good name with God. Make the truth your own. Move ahead. Oh, walk with God. Praise Jah for his son, the anointed. Praise Jah with me. Praise Jehovah, our God. Praise Jehovah's firstborn. Pray to Jehovah each day. Search out deserving ones. Seek God for your deliverance. Stay awake, stand firm, grow mighty. Stay awake, stand firm, grow mighty. <laughs> Take sides with Jehovah. Taste and see that Jehovah is good. Throw your burden on Jehovah. Worship Jehovah during youth. These are all titles that were had the exact same issue as guard your heart but what are we supposed to do are we supposed to change listen obey and be blessed to we listen obey and are blessed so it's entirely inconsistent and if you're going to introduce this bizarre rule about song titles you need to go back and apply that same rule to all the other song titles that have the same issue. And my third issue with this bizarre Watchtower paragraph really goes without saying, and that's that it's totally nonsensical to suggest that just because you are singing a song with a title that is urging someone to do something, that that is necessarily you who is doing it. You know, you can you can have a song that about any number of things. Nobody is nobody is seriously thinking. Oh well, that's that's them telling me to do this. That the person who's singing this song is actually telling me, presuming to tell me uh, that I need to do something. And this was perfectly summed up in one of the comments on the Reddit thread. Uh, actually, the top comment so far is Redditing again. And the comment says, fantastic, I can't tell you the number of times my wife refrained from singing because she was worried she'd stumble a brother by appearing to singingly tell him what to do. Because that number is zero. Good freaking God, what brother was so petty that he complained about the lyrics and how he hated sisters singing and telling him what to do? because you can be damned sure this didn't change because a sister complained. Very, very well said. Uh, it makes no sense at all. But I'm making this quick video on New Year's Day, just in the off chance that maybe a Jehovah's Witness will stumble on this. Please just think this thing through. This is supposed to be God's Spirit-appointed or Spirit-anointed channel of communication with mankind. And it's coming up with absurd stuff like this in its spiritual food. Telling women that they can't sing certain songs 
if those songs might be construed as telling men what to do. That apparently is what's on Jehovah's mind and that apparently, as was hinted at in this Reddit post, that's a more pressing thing to be dealt with than the widespread rampant abuse of children within the Jehovah's Witness organisation of all the things for them to fix. No, we've got to change, we've got to modify this song title because we don't want women telling men what to do or being perceived as telling men what to do. So that was just a quick video. You should really check out the Reddit page, the XJW Reddit sub, if you haven't done so already. It's a great community just for bringing people together and helping people express themselves and tell their stories and get stuff off their chest. Please do check that out. But all that remains is for me to repeat what I said at the beginning, which is to wish a very, very happy 2018 to all of my viewers. And as always, thank you for watching.